What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use Python with all its libraries inside of R. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to integrate Python into R in today's video, how to use Python with all its modules inside of R. And I think most of you guys watching this video will already use R, will already know what R is. But for those of you who don't know what R is, since I've never really talked about it extensively, it is a statistical programming language slash you could say a statistical programming environment. So what you see here on the screen is R Studio, the environment and R itself is the underlying language, mainly used by statisticians and by people that are not really programmers most of the time, people into economics, people into psychology or something like that, or statisticians that use it as a programming language. And there are a lot of similarities between Python and R, uh, even though Python is a general purpose language and R is a statistical programming language with a uh, niche focus on statistics and Python is can be used for networking for video games for web applications for data science for machine learning. Um, oftentimes, you might want to use Python packages and Python libraries that you're familiar with inside of R and this is what we're going to learn in this video how to do this. So as I mentioned, we're going to use the package called reticulate and in order to use it, we first need to install it by saying install packages and then reticulate inside of our studio here. And in my case, this is already installed. So you can see here, uh, everything works. And then we're going to now say library reticulate in order to be able to use it. And one thing that you can do right away is if you're interested in that you can run an interactive Python shell inside of R by saying repl underscore Python. So you basically run this command and then you run repl Python and this is going to basically start a um, interactive Python, a Python shell down here. So we can go ahead and do something like import numpy snp. And then we can say np dot random dot rand int 10 20 whatever. And you can see it generates a random number. This is Python. However, this is not really interesting to do that here in the uh, in the uh, in the command line in the interactive Python shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart the session here, I'm going to restart R. Uh, because one thing that I want to show you is that you can also choose the Python version that you want to use. So you can go ahead and print reticulate. And from reticulate colon colon the pi config function, this is going to show you which Python uh, version in which Python executable you're actually using right now. In my case, it shows that the Python I'm using right now is the Anaconda three Python, uh, which is the version 3.9.7. But I want to use a different version. So what I can do is I can say, use underscore Python, and I can provide the absolute path to that directory that I want to use. So in my case, this is going to be C users, flory, um, app data, local, programs, Python, Python 3.9. So in my case, now it says it failed to initialize a request because I already am using one. So in this case, again, restart the session without doing anything else, just import the library and then use Python directly. And then you can see, hopefully that now it uses a different Python, there you go. This is the Python that it uses. And it has a, the version 3.9.11. So now we're using the correct one. And we can start with some very simple imports in order to import packages, Python packages, of course, they first need to be installed. So in order to be able to use a Python package inside of R, you first need to install it for Python. So you want to open up the command line, pip install whatever package you plan on using, and then you can import it in R as well using reticulate. And for this video, we're going to just import, let's say NumPy. Um, and what we do here is we specify the alias as the variable name, we cannot say import numpy snp, we just say np, the variable np inside of R is now going to be the import of the numpy module. And we're going to do the same thing for pandas pandas is going to be the import of the pandas module, or pd is going to be the import of the pandas module, plt is going to be the import of uh, matplotlib dot pyplot s uh, not s sorry matplotlib.pyplot will be imported as plt. And then finally, I'm going to use web to import the pandas dash uh, or actually underscore data reader, which is maybe a library that not everyone knows because those are 
uh, very, very uh, well-known libraries and the pandas data reader is essentially for downloading data. Uh, we're going to use it to download stock data from the Yahoo Finance API. It is installed by saying pip install pandas dash data reader and not underscore data reader, but it is imported using the underscore. So that is the difference here. And now we can do something quite simple. Let's just import all these modules. And now let's generate some random numbers. Let's say x inside of r is np. And now we need to use the dollar sign to access the individual function. So random dollar rand int and then zero and 100, for example. And then you can see x has the value of 36, 58, 24, and so on. Um, this is quite simple, but we want to do something more interesting. We want to load stock data and visualize it using matplotlib inside of R Studio. So those of you who code in R know that when you have uh, when you use R and when you make a plot, you get it down here in R Studio in this uh, plot field. And this is going to happen also with matplotlib. So we're not going to get a separate matplotlib window, we're going to get the matplotlib graph inside of R Studio down here. So uh, we're going to say web data reader, Tesla, so TSLA is a stock ticker for Tesla, Yahoo is the finance API that we want to use the result of that should be stored into the data variable. And now you can see if I print the data variable, this is actually a data frame, this is the pandas data frame in R available, we can work with that data frame in R, I can say data dollar close to get the values of the close price, this works. And now we can go ahead and say PLT plot and we can plot the close price. Now one issue that we have here is that the date is not a column. So we cannot just say data date, the date is the index. And this is the pandas index, not the R index. So we need to get it by saying attr data and then as a string here pandas index, we're getting the attribute of data, which is called pandas dot index as the x value here and then just data close as the y value. Then we're going to say PLT um, title TSLA stock price is going to be the title. And then PLT show. Now if we run those commands, you can see we coded in Python, we get a typical matplotlib graph here, but we get it inside of our studio. Um, this works very well, it's very well integrated. Um, and we can do also some more complex visualization. So for example, uh, or before I show you the more complex, um, actually, let's let's use now a an R data frame and work with the R data frame in Python. So we basically load a data package uh, or uh, or a data set inside of R, we pass it to Python, and we get the results back to R. So let's say, for example, we have uh, data iris, the iris data set, we want to use this one here. So now we have this, um, this iris data set inside of R, this is not imported from Python, this is not from scikit-learn or something, this is the R data set. Now we can take this data set and put it into, um, we can put it into uh, the Python packages and work with it. So first of all, we can say plt scatter, and then we can say iris sepal length and iris sepal width. And you will see that actually we need to call I think or we should call uh, plt dot or plt dollar clear figure so that we don't have anything from the previous plot. And then we can just say plt show. And you can see that this plots the features so we can just pass the individual values to the scatter function, even though that's a Python function, we can pass the R values into it. And uh, if we want to do this even more complicated, so if we want to, for example, let's say we want to plot a correlation heat map of the individual features of the iris data set, what we can do is we can turn that iris data set into a pandas data frame, and then work with that pandas data frame, and then feed it back into our code. So what we can do, for example, here is we can say that um, the iris df, the iris data frame, is r underscore two pi, so r to Python, and we want to convert the iris data set into a Python data frame. And now we have this iris data frame here, which is uh, a pandas data frame now. And we can go ahead and import a library like Seaborn. So Seaborn is going to be import 
Seaborn. Um, of course, you need to say pip install Seaborn if you don't have it yet. But you basically say SNS is import Seaborn. And then we can do something like SNS heat map. And we can say now iris df. And we can call the correlation function from pandas. Because now it's a pandas data frame and not an R data frame. And we can say annotation equals true. And then we can say plt show. And oh, sorry. Uh, I think we need to do Ah, there you go. Now it works. So you can see that this plots a correlation heat map because we take the iris data frame, we transform it into a pandas data frame, we import Seaborn, and then we plot a heat map with the correlation on the individual features of that pandas data frame. And then we show it inside of R. So those are just some examples here, you can do a lot more, you can use all the Python modules that are somewhat compatible with R in this in this matter. So I don't know if you can do some fancy graphical user interfaces, or some web applications with it. But if it is about data science and machine learning, you can easily just import the Python packages into R and work with them uh, easily, which of course, if you are an R programmer, you should focus on becoming a better R programmer. But sometimes you might want to use features that are not available, uh, or not as easily available for R and you know how to do it in Python. So you might want to use Python inside of R and you can do that with reticulate. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.